we are living in incredibly challenging times as a nation right now. Church leaders and ministers are having to make lots of judgment calls about what to cancel and what might be okay to go ahead with. The advice we receive seems to be changing all the time and this translates into dilemmas each of us face as we have to make decisions. It raises the question about how do we live out our faith at such a time as this? Let me share a few thoughts, not seeking to give a definitive answer, but to offer some questions as a point of reflection. First of all, what does it mean to be a good citizen? The message version of the Bible starts at Romans 13 with the instruction, be a good citizen. Whilst we may have a range of political views on the government and opinions about how well or otherwise we think they are handling the crisis, Paul tells us to submit to the authorities as a matter of conscience. The intent of government advice is for the good of the country and seeking to minimise the devastating effect of the virus. Perhaps as a minimum response, as good citizens, we should make sure we follow the current advice as an example to others. However, being a good citizen may take us beyond this as well. What does it mean to be salt and light in our communities? A number of Christians are seeking to reach out to their neighbours, sending a note or creating a WhatsApp group, offering practical help for those who are self-isolating and emotional help for the lonely. Some of the most vulnerable people in society are at greater risk at this time as well. Donations to food banks are down and yet the need is likely to be greater than ever over the coming months. Are there ways that we can support at this time that will help us to excel as being good citizens? A second question, what does it mean to provide leadership? People in our communities may look to church leaders for emotional and spiritual leadership. The letter of 1 Peter is written to encourage those who are suffering persecution not to lose their hope. In chapter 3 verse 15 we read, But in your hearts revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. Whilst the context is of persecution, the message of bringing hope in difficult situations is appropriate for us to consider. In a time of national crisis, are there ways in which we can communicate hope in a loving God? We may have people asking questions that could be familiar to us, like how can a loving God allow suffering through this kind of virus? But there are others who may be afraid, those struggling with unexpected isolation, financial crises, and so on and so on. Are we prepared to be able to speak words of hope, love and truth into our communities as the opportunities arise. A third question, what does it mean to be church? It may be often quoted, the church is not the building. But what does that mean for us if activities and services cannot take place? It's one thing to miss one Sunday and a week of activities, but the likelihood is that this will last a number of weeks. What opportunities can we provide for people to receive spiritual input? Are there opportunities for streaming messages, messages and devotionals? Are there ways in which we can carry out some meetings through platforms like Zoom and Skype? If we do that, how do we make sure that our decisions are still spirit-filled? A vital consideration should be how we mobilise ourselves to be a praying community. At times of crises, we need to pray, yes, as individuals, but also as God's people standing together in unity. What could this look like in our situations? Perhaps churches can join together in their own homes at the time they would normally meet on a Sunday to pray together. 
uh, there is some other resources that we will share with you in a practical guide. We also need to ask the question, what does it mean to look after ourselves? You see, on top of all these decisions, we need to be wise. Each of us will have different health situations regarding our own health and that of loved ones. We may have a natural reaction to serve others and to keep on going, in particular where we see needs and we feel it's our duty to go the extra mile. However, we need to balance this by being responsible and recognise that it's important to consider our own emotional and spiritual well-being. We should remember as well that we could be unwitting carriers and spreaders of the virus if we put ourselves at risk. So on top of all the other decisions, we need to consider what it means to balance our own well-being with our call to service. This may look different for each of us, but it should be a point of reflection as we consider our response to the coronavirus. Now this list of questions isn't intended to be an exhausted list, but rather a starting point to encourage each of us to think about how we might be responding to all that is going on around us at this time. Please do feel free to contact us as an association and to share thoughts with us, particularly stories and ways in which you are reaching out to the communities, then we can share that with other people. If you're facing specific challenges or have questions, do ask us. We would love to help in any way that we can. We will send you details about how you can practically respond and some more practical advice of different things and different places. And we keep going together and all the time, let us pray together and seek together God's hand in this situation, that together we can serve him as we are called to do. May God bless you in your ministry ahead at this time.